The Tasmanian gov government is delighted to welcome the North Melbourne Tasmanian kangaroos to Tasmania, their second home. We're absolutely delighted with our partnership with the North Melbourne Football Club because now in Tasmania, our Tassie girls and women now have a pathway to playing uh, elite professional football at the highest of levels. We are delighted that we have eight Tasmanian women uh, playing in the Tassie Kangaroos and we look forward to uh, seeing how the team goes, especially on February the 3rd. And on February the 3rd, we just want to encourage Tasmanians to vote with their feet and to come to the spiritual home of football in Tasmania, North Hobart Football Oval, and to support our, our team that represents Tasmania at the highest of levels. To support our women in regards to playing AFL, the Tasmanian government's also investing $10 million into levelling the playing field, which uh, together with the uh, contributions that we made by councils and other sporting organisations, this will see us have about $20 million invested into making sure that we have facilities where our Tasmanian women, especially if they're playing uh, AFL or cricket, have the suitable sport, sports facilities which can help their participation. Uh, with cricket, there's, a, there's been a lot of crossover issues between cricket grounds being available and, and, and footy grounds being available. Are you hoping that some of this funding is going to alleviate those headaches that we tend to have this time of year every year? Uh, what this is going to enable is to, especially uh, the number one issue is toilets. So if you're a female and you go to a sports ground, there is quite often change rooms, but the, there's only one toilet and a lot of urinals. So what all the women are saying is they actually need more toilets, if we can have more toilets then we can utilise a lot more grounds than are available at the moment because if you're an AFL team, it, you know, if you've got a minimum of uh, 36 players, even in a minute each, half time can go for a very long time. How many grounds are we talking about? Are we, are we saying this rolled out as yet or is it to come or have the grounds been locked in? Or? Uh, there'll be, uh, so we've, this is a uh, two-stage process, stage one has been completed, the second stage uh, we're going through uh, the applications at the moment and we'll be making a final announcement in February. Scott? Yep, um, I'd just like to, to say very happy to be, to be down here and getting the group together for the first time. It's a, it's a great opportunity and um, yeah, really looking forward to the meet and greet we've got tomorrow at UTAS at one o'clock and we'd love to see people down there and you know, very supportive of the spirit of Tasmania and their support to the whole club. Um, and it's just a great opportunity for the girls to, uh, to finally be together, minus Jess Duffin, who's got a, uh, a cricket commitment with the Renegades up uh, in Victoria. Obviously, eight players on the list already from Tasmania. Just how deep do you think the talent pool is in Tasmania? Yeah, it's, it's surprisingly deep. And I think it's, it's just a, it's, it's almost like a bonus, really, having that because well, what's currently happening at the moment with training is the girls will train um, with the next level of girls, so in the academy, um, and then some top uh, TAC girls that will also train with them as well. And what that does, it gives the girls that are in the program the chance to, to help develop the next level coming through. And, um, yeah, we're really comfortable that there's enough talent coming through in the next few years to keep adding onto our list. What's in store the next couple of days, mate? Is it meet and greets or is it training as well? Bit of yeah, yeah, a bit of everything. We've, um, we'll do a meet and greet tomorrow. Um, captain's run and then um, on Sunday we're going to play a, a little bit of match sim and um, and get a chance to have a run on North Hobart Oval which is a fantastic opportunity. Um, everyone tells me it's looking a treat so it would be nice to get onto it and uh, have a bit of a run and then um, head back Sunday night. I think I read, uh, how's it going to work with training? I think one of your leadership group members will come down and train with the Tassie girls every training session or something? Yeah, so the leadership group met and we spoke about how we could, um, you know, get over the divide I suppose between the, the two states and, and one, of the, one of the things was in the program we were really careful the way we programmed it that basically every two weeks either the Tassie girls will come up and, and train with us or vice versa will come down here um, but on top of that the leadership group were come up with the own idea of um, each week one of them will travel down on the Saturday and do the uh, main session with the girls here and uh, so far that's happened a couple of times and the feedback from it's been fantastic. How tough is that is for you as coach to work on game style and setups and those kind of things when you've got a divided group? Yeah, I'm, re I'm really lucky in that respect. Trent Bartlett's been amazing. He does does a great job down here. So we, we communicate all the time and um, we'll, we'll do things as far as the same training plans. And um, obviously there's a, you can't, because it's not me speaking, but it's coming through Trent. But So there is a little bit of a divide there, I suppose, in the messaging. But yeah, the, ap the actual fundamentals of our game plan and everything have been taught. Um, and then what we do with our team meetings is we video them, we also do them live um, so the girls are, can sit in and, 
and dial in and, and listen to how we, what we're doing up there and vice versa, if they have a meeting here, then we'll listen to what's being said down here. So, so far, from, from um, we have individual programming for all, each girl and you know, so far that you could not tell the difference if you didn't know um, where the girls live, which is fantastic. What's your expectations on this group for the first season? Well, obviously you'd like to you'd like to win. That's that's the main thing. It's um, but it's out of our control. The competition will be very tight this year. Carlton will, will be a big improvement, and that'll be a fantastic game to get to. Um, come early Feb at North Hobart, and you know I, I can't give you a prediction of where we'll finish, but I know that we're just trying to control what we can. And um, one of those things that we can't control results. So, um, but what we can control is performance. So we've got a really big focus on training and trying to give our best performance each training session so that that relates back into games. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, hopefully that brings results.